Uh, Josh, I know you're filling in for Brian, but hopefully you've got the funeral music at the ready. And if not, then I'll, I'll move on. <laughs> oh, so there we go. All right. Good work. Good work. All right. I knew we hired so, the right guy. <laughs> nice. There we go. So, um, oh, yeah. you can't even do it, can you? It's I just, can't. It's, it's I, hard. Did, I know that this cuts to the to your core because you were very, very pro Ara Project Ara. I l- literally did a gasp, oh my God, spit <gasps> take when I looked at Twitter when I saw this come across the feed last week. Um, and basically, uh, in regards to Project Ara, which for the, uh, for those who need to be reminded, that was the uh, modular modularized uh, phone that Google was uh, in heavy research and development with. The idea was that you had this, uh, you know, your main phone backing, and you could snap on a better camera or a speaker set or something like that, almost like Lego bricks for your phone. Uh, that I was very excited about. Uh, it was scheduled to roll out in Puerto Rico last year, but that got delayed. Um, they talked about rolling out dev kits at, at I.O. this year uh, with an uh, eye in the end of the year to ship those. Uh, and then a lot of stuff happened. Uh, basically, uh, Ara lost its director, Paul Ermenko, last year. Um, and then uh, the ATAP, which is the division that Ara fell under at Google, uh, the head of ATAP, Regina Dugan, left for Facebook a couple of weeks before the I.O. announcement. Um, and there's been a lot of question marks as to whether or not this is going to happen or not. Now, Reuters is reporting that Google has halted the project. Uh, they say it's a part of a broad streamlining within Google's organization as they revamp their hardware division under uh, Rick Osterloh, Flo's favorite guy. Um, and, <laughs> and basically, there's concerns that you know separating the phone into components actually slows everything down and makes the phone expensive and bad on battery life, which I get, but I hate to think that that would be, that they couldn't solve that. Um, and basically what, you know, this is the kind of first sign that, may, you know, the uh, Alphabet's X division, uh, AKA the Moonshot Factory, uh, is possibly facing some internal pressure to produce marketable products and ship them, uh, which is uh, something that's very, very hard to do in the hardware space. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're coming up with, out, you know, really out there concepts like a modular phone and, you know, and probably learning from what they've learned uh, from Google Glass. And we always go back to talk about Google Glass whenever we're talking about the, this X division and, you know, what an unsuccessful hardware rollout looks like. Um, you know, and then, of course, the dog pile happened and there were pundits saying, you know, modular phones are a bad idea and they should mm-hmm. never have done this. I disagree. I love this idea. I wanted to see it in reality. I thought there was so much opportunity for third party accessories and, th- you know, like I just think it's so cool. And, and we're already seeing it with um, all the LG, G, what, the G4, G5, G5. Uh, with the slide out components is doing it a little bit. The Motorola, uh, the, Moto the new Moto, the Mo- yeah, the Moto mods where you can you know pop on a camera, pop on speakers, pop on that projector, which is cool. Um, but that's in a much bigger scale, and they they're rolling it out. But I love the look of Aura, their little blocks and everything, and I'm just very upset. I'm just very very upset. Yeah, it is a bummer that we will not see it. I you've been very positive on Ara over the the year the few years that we've heard about it. I've been yeah. positive positive on it in concept, but I just never understood how the reality was going to bear it out. I never understood, you know, cuz there was for the longest time it was the understand understanding at least in the press that Ara like this wasn't an experimental thing. Google, you know, somewhere along the line gave people that were writing about this phone the impression that their intention was not for this to be an enthusiast device or, you know, kind of a, a, a strange outlier, but that this was going to be a mainstream thing. And I never thought it was going to be mainstream. I don't know how you make something like this mainstream. It sounds great on paper. I just don't think people want that kind of control necessarily. Certain types well, of people do, but not everybody. I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I really think that it could, I think it would fall somewhere between mainstream and enthusiast. I definitely think that there, there is a marketplace and purely just for look at the success of Legos. Right, something as simple as build your own blocks to make whatever you want, applied to the phone. So you know, we all. The thing is, when we sit down and we say, sketch out your your perfect phone, we all have different things that are important to us. Some might say battery life. Some might say camera lens. Some might say speakers. Some might say, you know, there are all these kind of components that co- that manifest themselves in the physical devices. And this pro- this product would allow you to make the phone of your dreams. Um, and the reason why I liked it was because it's a crazy idea. It's a, yeah, it in crazy, this yeah. in yeah in this world of 
of really narrow defined specs and product lines and we complain about fragmentation we complain about companies that have you know five phones when they, they should just have two a big one and a small one and all this sort of stuff but to have the ability to you know suffer maybe a little bit in width of the device or size of the device but be able to make the phone you want that's that's i could market the hell out of that that's yeah. that's a fun that's a fun concept and you know and then you get the Harmon Cardens of the world and the and the 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 Hasselblads and the and the, all the all these you know kind of uh, accessory makers to make the little uh, little snap-on plug-in devices and then uh, you know it could be great. I, I I saw the I mean I'm definitely seeing it more of a you know through rose-colored glasses, not taking into account the performance issue, not taking into account the battery life issues, like all those things that make it work. Maybe they just couldn't get it work to work. Maybe yeah. it was a moonshot that they couldn't get to a production reality. Um, but I just I just think that that there probably was a market for this and it wouldn't be huge, but. Uh, you don't know until you put it out in the world. Yeah, uh, it would still be very cool. I still would yeah. love to have the opportunity to hold a Project Aura phone and like yeah. have the experience of taking a module out and putting it back in because it looks very satisfying. It looks yeah. kind of like <laughs> snap that into place and there you go. You've got this, I don't know, patchwork of a phone. But I really like the promise of it. I just didn't know how. And, and we should also... Um, stress the fact that this is not an official announcement that Google has sure. made yet. This is a report from Reuters. It could end up being completely false. You just never know with this kind of stuff. Um, but if they're really trying, because you keep hearing about this where Google or Alphabet really wants to kind of hone its hardware division and especially its moonshots into things that are actually going to be manufacturable, things that could actually be turned into projects. For the longest time, they've operated these these aspects of their business um, with free reign to just kind of play around and much in the way that you see in Silicon Valley and the in the HBO show. And yeah. now it seems like they're kind of tightening the reins a little bit and saying, okay, well, what's what's po what's possible now? What are the things that we should be focusing our time on? And let's get things shipped. Let's ship things. We don't even have the first Project Aura phone yet. Or, sorry, Project Tango phone. And that was yeah. uh, that's already been announced. We've got a couple well, of weeks left in summer. Got to get that it's, out. It's funny though because like from a business standpoint, I totally get that idea that you got to you should always be shipping and that mantra and that yeah. you definitely should, you know, be making sure that you're making products that can be marketable and shipped. But at the same time, it's the moonshot division. Yeah. Like I feel like that's a bit of a you know a, a, you're talking out two mouths or a bit of an oxymoron to have a division dedicated at coming up with crazy ideas and telling them but they better be shippable. No, that's a product division. You know, so either stop calling them the moonshot division and and you know bring them back down to earth to make actual you know marketable products uh, and lower the expectations on the craziness. Um, or keep that crazy because the thing is the crazy is what sells the Google. I, idea, you know, uh, you know, Sergey interrupting the keynote for for skydiving Google Glassers, and maybe that's a Google of the past. Maybe Google now is moving away from that, moving more towards this is our pixel line. These are the products we're making, and yeah. these are what's shipping. And and yes, that's good business sense. It's a little boring, but it's uh, probably will you know net them out better in the long run. I think I like what you said there. Keep that crazy. Keep that crazy, Google. Keep that crazy. Don't yeah. get rid of that crazy. Keep that crazy. Like that's it. why we're that's why we're here. I wait. I, I wait on bated breath every week for the crazy. Show me the crazy. I love it. So. <laughs>